next to track logs, there's a select button. And you can select multiple track logs, and then you can select delete, and it will ask you, do you want to delete multiple track logs? Beautiful. Okay. I, was, I saw a couple of people I, ask I that I thought question. I read there was a way to delete the ones not associated with the logbook entry, but I don't see that offhand, but I, I thought I read something about that. I don't see it. And, and tied right in with that one, somebody asked the question, if you have a track log that's associated with a, a logbook entry, and then you delete that track log, does that leave the logbook entry in place? Yes, the logbook entry remains in place. It's an association. They're not like merged into one another. It's just an association okay. between the two. But if you delete the track log and it was in the logbook entry, you will lose the track log from the logbook entry. Right. Correct? Right. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Um, and uh, a couple people asked this question about uh, somebody has a Sentry Plus, so it's recording a track log on its own. And he's also got his iPad running with ForeFlight on it, and he's recording a track log there. Now he's got duplicate copies of this track log. Is there a convenient way to resolve that and, and only have one? Th there can be only one? <laughs> it, won't, it won't merge them automatically. You would just have, need to delete the one that you don't want. Okay. So, so yeah, it's up to, and, the, um, up to the individual. And when I you just happen to see in the chat... John Barber posted, if you select all the track logs to delete them, it then will give you the option to delete only the associated or unassociated ones. Thanks for that, John. Oh, interesting. See, we learn stuff here. That's why I come here. That's why we do. That's why it's a workshop. We're, we learn as much from everybody else. Anyway, what more do you have for Ryan while we got um, That's all I've got for now for Ryan. Can, can, I, can I jump in with two quick ones? Yep. All right. Uh, first... Um, Somebody asked, a couple of people have, have asked the persistence of the turbulence. That is, how, how far back in time does that go? Yeah, so um, it will stay on your device as, until a new uh, report is, is made in that area. Um, the, uh, I, the, I think that the date range or the time range that it sticks around, I don't know offhand. Um, but it will be, it will automatically refresh as long as you have an internet connection and the device that's the, the data that's on the device, um, won't be, won't just disappear once it's like an hour old or something like that. If you don't have anything new in that area that's been updated, it'll stay there. So you at least have something to know. Okay. And then, uh, one of our users, uh, that, uh, Brian and I know really well, uh, has asked for a request. It's not, this is not a question, but an easier way to do. Uh, create, edit, manage checklists. That is, be able to take blocks of blocks from one checklist to another. Things that might be common to in the, common to a series of aircraft or just common things to do. Uh, be able to type them uh, on a PC and be be able to port it over to uh, where it's easier to type and then port it over to uh, uh, for flight. So, not so much a question, but a recommendation. Got it. No, that's a good feature request. I know there's a lot of folks using checklists today and um, sharing checklists as well. And, um, you know, we do support the ability to import logbook entries via the web. So the, you know, the idea of importing checklists isn't, isn't too far off from that. So that's a good idea. I'll take that back to the team. Okay. And one more, and then I'll stop. I, I don't want to hog things here, but this is, this one I think is important because I've been involved in flying clubs. There's a, somebody asked on behalf of a flying club, they have multiple pilots with multiple four flight subscriptions, but the airplane has a sentry. So is there any way on the turbulent, some of the advanced features, is there any way that a club membership could cover or some sort of process where that shared asset can be used and not penalize the, uh, so to speak, penalize the uh, the users? Sure. So a sentry, so, so a sentry can be used with any four flight device, regardless oh. of whose account it's on um, okay. for ADSB, GPS, et cetera. For the reported okay. turbulence feature, it's mm -hmm. associated with one individual four flight account. Um, okay. And that's specifically can, what I'm asking about. Yeah. Yeah. And anyone can add, uh, it's, it's available as an add on for $50 a year if you don't have a century or, or you don't have your own. Um, but right now it's currently associated to just one individual four flight account. Okay. Um, I would say though, for that, for that, for that flight club or anyone in this situation, send us an email team at fourflight.com. Let us know like your situation, what your setup is and, uh, and CC me on it, Ryan at fourflight.com, and, and we'll work with you and see what we can do. Okay, great. Thanks.
Well, I, I see a, a common theme of a lot of people worrying about being nickel and dimed with features. You know what I mean? Kind of like fl flying Spirit Airlines, where oh, you want a seatbelt with that? Well, you're going to have to pay more. Uh, so I'm just playing devil's advocate, letting you know some feedback of what I'm seeing from a lot of our our viewers uh, are asking. You know, in, in, in especially like this, it's a first sign of oh, we're going to have to pay more for small features. And I think that that's a little bit something people worry about. So I just want to provide that feedback. Um, and then the other thing, of course, is the Android issue. So many people are, are wishing and hoping and praying that ForeFlight will become available on Android. Uh, we, we have a link posted on our website to the blog post you wrote about that, a very succinct answer as to why you don't do that. Uh, but maybe a brief answer for everybody who's here. And then we're going to get to the giveaways. Sure, absolutely. So f first, just to address pricing, you know, um, well aware, right, of, of people's um, concerns on cost, especially in, in the world of aviation where things get very, very expensive. Um, you know, one thing we've we've prided ourselves on for a long time is bringing like what we believe is a tremendous amount of safety uh, and utility uh, for starting at 120 bucks a year. That's like 10 bucks a month. That's cheaper than Netflix, you know? Um, like that's, a, you in the world of aviation, little... I'm a little biased, but I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, yeah. That being said, that being said, to totally here on pricing and and um you know we're gonna we're, we're gonna make sure that we're delivering the right value at the right subscription levels uh, long term. Um, Android, Forflight has no plans to do uh, an Android version right now. Um, and you know I, I wrote up that blog post, uh, Brian, that you mentioned, and and perhaps you could link to it, but. Um, that's not because Forflight doesn't like Android. Like, uh, I think Android's a, a, a cool operating system. Like, I have Android devices at home. Like, Android's Android's neat. Um, the reason we're committed to iOS um, is is twofold. The first is that our entire team, every aspect about how we've built the company um, in terms of, of aptitudes and skill sets, is centered around the iOS ecosystem, right? So, Objective C engineers, Swift engineers, right? Um, so iOS designers, right? A QA team that's very familiar with iOS. Um, going to Android would essentially mean, and we wouldn't want to do it unless we could guarantee like a really top-notch product, right? Like a product that's like, has parity with, with, with our, some of our existing offerings. Um, going to Android would mean uh, an investment uh, that just doesn't make much sense to us right now, given that the majority of our customers are flying with iPads uh, and iPad to us has really won out as the device of choice uh, for an EFB. Um, it's complicated by the fact that, um, you know, when we, when we design and build something for iOS, we're designing it in, in, a, in a single design system and coding it in a single code base that allows us to, to build it, test it and deploy it uh, in one seamless way and, and know that that code is going to work correctly on all the iOS devices that are out there, right? Android has has what a, a little bit more of a, a complicated device fragmentation issue where there's a lot more different types of devices out there, capabilities, resolutions, et cetera. Um, and because of the nature of our product, it's a mission critical product uh, and people's lives depend on it. For us right now, sticking with iOS is 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 the, what we're confident in and, and the right decision for us. And we think for, for aviation. All right. Well, very good. And I did post in the chat. I'll, I'm going to post it one more time right now. So you can click on it is, is that blog post. Uh, it's also on our website, a link to it there. But I'd like to get to the giveaways and then we're going to stop our recording and then we'll chat informally with anybody else who wants to hang around and ask some other questions. But I know that people are staying up for the giveaways, so I'd like to move on to that really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put my screen on here. And the first thing I'd like to give away is thank you Thank you for from ForeFlight for donating a gracious gift of, uh, uh, of a Pro Plus subscription or a $240 gift certificate. And we drew from the attendees who were on uh, while you were speaking, Ryan. And the winner of the gift certificate from ForeFlight is Jason Kim. So congratulations, Jason. We'll reach out to you via email uh, on the to email address that you registered for this ForeFlight for this workshop uh, as well. The uh, gold seal, you can, we have, uh, they've graciously donated to us a lifetime subscription. That's a $300 value uh, for either private pilot or instrument pilot. 
Um, the winner of the first Lifetime Ground School uh, goes to Jonas Clark. Congratulations, Jonas. We'll email you at the email address that you've given us. And the second winner is uh, Timothy Higgins. Congratulations on that. Uh, we'll email you as well. And you can choose private or instrument, whichever one you want for a lifetime subscription. Even if you've already got your private and your instrument, that's a great source for recurrent, uh, keeping yourself continually educated. And uh, the graphics that they use is if a picture is worth a thousand words, I think a video is worth a million words. And, and so they're, they've got, they do a really good job with that. I've been truly impressed. So uh, good luck, you guys, with that. You can also uh, get a one-year ground school app winner for the finer points. goes to uh, Sandra uh, Fenning. I'm doing these out of order. But uh, Sandra Fenning, congratulations on the ground school app for the finer points. Uh, there's that slide. Uh, He's got now private and instrument that contains the new ACS formatted uh, a little bit better that you can look at. That, anybody can look at that. Uh, back to the NAFI uh, membership. One year membership goes to Margie Leggett. Congratulations on that. If you're already a member, uh, then you will get another year tacked onto that. Uh, members get a lot more than any. You don't have to be a flight instructor to be a, a NAFI member. Uh, all members agree to our, our wonderful code of ethics and bring people up to a, a more professional level, get access to uh, magazine archives. And uh, of course, you can take the professional development program as a member of NAFI and of course, get a wonderful discount on poor flight as well, among a lot more educational and a lot of content that NAFI offers. So congratulations, uh, Margie, on that. The uh, Ultimate Pilot Logbook goes to John McCaw. Congratulations. We'll reach out to you on that. Again, a well-designed uh, logbook that has all of the columns that you would need. Uh, you can go back and look at this and pause it, but there's a lot of different, like, for example, over 50 nautical mile cross country. There's a lot of breakdowns here that you usually wish you had more columns for. And of course, all the endorsements in the back are laid out nicely. So congratulations, John McCaw, for that. And uh, just a few more pictures of the logbook. The, uh, my favorite flight instructor and primary flight instructor, uh, my dad, Barry Schiff, wrote this uh, rewrite of a, the pilot's guide to flying, an illustrated guide to flying. Uh, if you know someone interested in aviation or an aficionado and thinking about getting into it, this is a great educational book. This book goes to Robert Kelly. Congratulations. Uh, dad will sign that book and send it off to you. So uh, that's all we have. You have a lot more on our, our website. Any notes or stuff that we come up with, links to, to good articles or blogs about why ForeFlight doesn't have an Android version. Uh, they're all on our, our website, foreflightworkshops.com. And uh, the Q&A, we'll have additional Q&A that don't get answered. We, there's no way we could answer all the questions we got here. We're answering the ones we get a lot of theme uh, from, and, and we'll, we'll answer more and get the videos on the Q&A page on our website as well. You can email your questions to foreflightworkshops at gmail.com. <laughs>